folks, it's The Rand, and welcome back to the Crash Bandicoot Wrath of Cortex No Damage Run! We've shifted gears once again, now we're on the GameCube version of the game, and... Well, things are about to take a graphical nosedive. And in fact, the game doesn't exactly run very smoothly either. See, see, it's pretty well capped at 30 frames a second for the most part, although it can occasionally for a few seconds actually get to 60. I think it would have been better off if they just kept it at 30. At least it would have ran a little better. Anyway, moving on to level 5 now. Compactor Reactor. Oh, I'm gonna shake, rattle, and roll your bandicoot butt. And here's the loading screen for the GameCube version. Yep, it's literally just a black screen with text. Not exactly interesting, but at the very least, at least it loads pretty quick, about as fast as the Xbox version. Alright, so we're gonna start this level off by going for a minecart ride! Oh yeah! Time to unleash our inner Donkey Kong Country! So basically, this cart can be tilted left and right, and you can use that to switch tracks if there's a divide in it. And you can also use it to reach boxes that are just out of your range. We have ourselves a yellow gem path here, guaranteeing that we're going to have to come back here later once we have that gem. And yeah, you can also use the tilting to avoid nitros once those start getting involved. Because of the way the camera works in this game, you might find yourself having to do some rather quick reactions in order to avoid the nitro, so make sure you're paying attention to what's coming up. Of course, you might also need to do that to hit any boxes that suddenly pop up in your path. I believe we have, yes, a Nitro right here. Ooh, that was kind of close. So, yeah. Make sure you're paying attention to that and tilt accordingly. It's not a long section, though, so it shouldn't be too troublesome. We just jump out, and boom! We are now inside the Earth Elemental Factory. There are four factories in this game, and each one's named... Each one themed after one of the elementals. And hey, look! It's the Beaker Throwing Lab Assistants! We haven't seen you guys since Slippery Climb! Unfortunately for them, their attack is even more easy to avoid than before because we're in a 3D space. Kinda feel sorry for those guys, really. But don't worry, we're gonna be seeing plenty of them in this level. There's a lot of drill bits that come out of the walls here, but they come out pretty slowly, so avoiding them shouldn't be too difficult. And also make sure you're not jumping into the beakers because they can kill you in midair as well. Also, behind this pile of boxes is a 1-up, if you want it. And we've also got rocks coming down onto these conveyor belts, so make sure you're not uh, standing right under where they're going to fall in, and you should be pretty alright. But once again, they move very slowly across the screen, so avoiding them is not difficult. And these beaker-throwing lab assistants are wearing white lab coats instead of the black ones. Maybe they're a higher rank than the other guys. And I'm not sure why this guy is using chemical waste to clean a conveyor belt. Eh, whatever. Cleanser of your choice. So now we're heading to the bonus room, and I need to go ahead and get a personal grievance of mine about the GameCube version out of the way. As we've established in the previous games, you can crouch and jump to do a high jump. However, in this game, if you try and do that... Look, when you crouch, I'm pressing the jump button but I'm not jumping. You cannot do a traditional high jump in the GameCube version of Wrath of Cortex, and that is pretty bad design. I mean, it is a, an established part of Crash's moveset that he should be able to do a high jump from a crouch, but now the only way you can do it is by sliding. So, at least you're not completely locked out of it. Still, I just can't understand why they would leave that out like that. Especially when they got it right in the other two versions. So... What the heck? <sighs> anyway, make sure you count out the boxes on bounces on these boxes, and do a high bounce on the last bounce so that you can reach the next one without falling. And then hit this one-up box before the TNT sets off this exclamation box, otherwise you're going to miss your chance to get that. But overall, it's a slightly challenging bonus round, but not too bad. And we've got ourselves a little preview of what's to come. It's starting to look a bit more like Piston in a way, really. Anyway, moving on. Got a conveyor belt constantly pushing us back, but you should still be able to get under the pistons, no problem. These lasers can be a little tricky to get under if you just do the crouch. 
simply because uh, it takes uh, about a full second in order to do a crouch, so I don't actually recommend doing it that way. This is one instance of animation time working against you. And you're not going to have a problem noticing the crystals in the GameCube version because the texture sticks right out. No transparency whatsoever. I, I appreciate it for that, I guess, but still, the fact that they took out so many special effects in this version of the game is rather disappointing. I mean, just look how flat the 1-Up icon is for a crash. It, it, there's no texturing, there's no shading to it whatsoever. And this is true pretty much throughout this version of the game. It just does not look as good as the other ones. And that's a large part of why I don't recommend it. Anyway, we're in the home stretch here. Just make sure you're watching out for these lasers. Oh, don't you spray them. Okay. They can shoot kind of low, so I prefer to just run across when there's no laser shooting. Whew! All right. There we go. And there's our box completion gem. It looks kind of yellow, but rest assured, it is clear. And that was Compactor Reactor, and that's all the goodies that we're going to be getting from it for now. And that was the GameCube version of the game. I personally would not recommend it. It doesn't look as good. It doesn't run as well. Literally, the only reason you would want to play this version is if you would, for some reason, prefer to use the GameCube controller, which is not a bad controller to use either. But anyway, now that we're done with that level, we see that all these levels have now been blocked off because now we have ourselves a boss approaching. So join us next time as we take on Cortex's creation in Rumble in the Rocks. For now, enjoy the outtakes of Compactor Reactor, and I shall see you next time. It can make it kind of difficult to see the nitros go- Oh, I just missed the box. Yeah, just kill me. Oi. And make sure you're not jumping into these bottles either, because they can knock you out of the air. Okay, sure, just run right into them. I came back to the PS2 and X- Oh! I got nothing to say on that one. I just was clumsy. Pretty easy to avoid. Unlike beakers, apparently. Lab assistants throwing beakers, but these ones have white coats. And I think we see why. <laughs> so, other than that, not too much that we need to watch out for. And remember to do a high bounce on the last bounce. So, yeah, just make sure you're keeping an eye out for those. They come out. Wow. I wouldn't actually recommend doing that. Like, when they put it into the wall and stuff. Oh! Yeah, who needs a falling animation when you can just disappear? Okay, yeah.